The impacts of climate affect our young people, affect our elders, affect the way that we live, affect the relationships that we have, and then they also affect, of course, world economies and the future of those who are yet unborn. And so how we respond now, as we know, um, is going to be the most important and could be the most detrimental for the future of our young people. When Columbus came to the New World and there was an exchange of diseases, of parasites, of culture, of ideas that forever changed our world, there needs to be another exchange now, the Indigenous Exchange, where Indigenous ways of knowing have the best opportunity to reinform. We can actually help guide the, the tools of modern day culture. What we've been trying to do for a while is really reasserting our role in the narrative and challenging, you know, what is this dominant discourse and obsession with kind of mitigation or adaptation? And so First Nations Climate Lens is trying to kind of bring all those perspectives together, not trying to recreate the wheel, but trying to bring it together in a way to disrupt kind of mainstream thinking. It's really about a holistic approach. Climate impacts are included in all parts of our lives, from housing, food security, to thinking about health and well-being, and then, of course, um, economic development and creating opportunities for people in community. So it's all about interconnectivity and collaboration and having a holistic approach. And at the end of the day, really being grounded in that knowledge and those teachings um, that have been passed on through our people through generations. My grandmother always, always told me, she says, you know, our trails are our language. How do you say muskrat in Southern Toshone? Zena. And, uh, it's learning our culture, it's learning the other culture, and it's always bringing us back home, you know, to speak our own language and to go to other places visiting and speak their language also. Our history from the time of creation is carried through our stories, our songs, our language. So the business that you're doing here to talk about the environment and our relationship to the environment is very, very important because we face many challenges as Indigenous people. We need to, through meetings like this, spread that knowledge and help people to become educated in the way of our being and our thinking so that they can hear the stories in a good way. We have to really think about the ways in which we live, who we are, and start to get more grounded in the concept of take only what you need. And that we must be walking the talk, so to speak, showing the integrity that our elders have taught us in how we live our lives. Through that lens, it's getting away from that dichotomy between like either you're mitigating or you're adapting when in kind of actuality, the space that I think we want to get to is like, you know, language revitalization as an adaptation strategy, getting back to the land as a mitigation strategy. And so by thinking about it in those ways, we can start to redefine the problem and then redefining the solution. And in our redefining of the problem, then develop solutions based on that problem identification instead of, oh, we just need to address GHGs when in actuality, I think we need to address everything. This gathering really is about doing just that. So when policy and direction is set forth by governments or at international spaces like the COP, Council of the Parties meetings, what does an indigenous lens to climate action really look like? And as we know, connection to water, connection to land, connection to animals, that interconnectivity is something that is a very different way of looking at the world. We need to put everything on the table and just take what we need from both. That's you know what trading was a, a long time ago. Two different sides of the same coin. And yes, they're they're opposite worldviews, you know, they're they're both looking opposite ways. But when we invest in our future, we use the same coin. 
indigenous peoples have always had solutions to respond to these major shifts. We've experienced that for thousands and thousands of years. And so through the stories, through the songs, through the teachings, through the way in which we live and we see the world, there's so much that we have to contribute to solutions. And in fact, we all need to be looking at the solutions that we have in those communities to say, yes, like, you know, no longer can modern science be the only way in which we view things. We actually need to take a whole new lens and start to put these lenses together. And so that's what we're looking to do.